Desk Lady Ada. Hello and welcome to another Desk of Lady Ada. It's a Sunday night. It's about Lady Ada o'clock and that means it's time to check out what's going on on my desk. I've had a sample smorgasbord and a uh, mailbag mania going on here. Lots of stuff came in the mail. So I thought I would show off what's going on on my desk, like literally. Let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Okay, so first, like, I, I did get samples and some of them are like kind of interesting, so I thought I'd, I'd show them to you. So this is like a really long um, piezo sensor and these are like vibration sensors, but usually they're like little discs that you vibrate, but this is like super long. So I thought I'd sample, um, try out this sample. So it's wired up uh, with a one mega ohm resistor between um, the two uh, piezo pads because it's a capacitive sensor, basically active capacitor. And then the analog voltage is being read by this cutie pie and there's an LED being lit. And then you can see when I, when I move the sensor, it detects little spikes. So that it's, it's like a movement motion touch sensor type thing. So that, that's kind of interesting. Uh, so that's like number one. Um, Okay, next up, uh, I wanted to show off a little demo I made because uh, we've got audio working on the Raspberry Pi Pico uh, in CircuitPython, which is awesome. So I've got a little speaker hooked up here, and then when I press this button, it makes a chime. Maybe I'll hold it up to the microphone. You can hear it. And uh, so is this Raspberry Pi Pico? Yes. RP2040. And it audio. does, yeah, it's doing audio. And here's the thing. What so, type of audio? I was like, well, I'm glad you asked. So the Pico does not have a DAC. I really like What's DAC. What's a DAC? Just for the folks who, it's the first time they've ever seen a video. Okay, well, welcome to your first video. Yeah. It's a digital to analog converter. Um, so a lot of chips have an analog to digital converter that can read analog signals, and some chips have a digital to analog converter that can write analog signals. And this is really handy when you want to do audio. So some of our favorite chips, like the SAMD21 and the SAMD51, um, and even like the, uh, I think the STM32 or 405 have a DAC, um, which lets it write true analog signals. So you get like a true analog output, which is great for audio. The um, Pico does not. However, what the Pico does have is extremely high speed PWM. It's like, like 120 megahertz or something crazy fast, which means that you can PWM output. And then over here, I have an RC filter. Um, it's a capacitor and a resistor together that take that PWM signal and they smooth it out into an analog signal. It's actually it's smoothed out quite well. Um, it's not as nice as a, a true DAC, but you know, for two cents apart, you get something pretty close. And um, then it's being uh, amplified through this little Stemma speaker thing. Um, we also are adding I2S audio, but if you want to try PWM audio, that's in like, the latest build for the Pico. Um, you can use any pin and then, you know, you don't actually need um, the RC filter, but just look online for like PWM audio RC filter. And this is, I think, a um, 1K resistor and like a 0.1 microfarad capacitor or something. Um, so, so check that out. Very fun. And they can make little sound effects. And then I2S audio will be um, even uh, higher quality so that we can um, do like true like 32 bit or 16 bit audio. Um, but then you need a separate chip and it gets a little bit more complicated. So that's cool though. Um, I'm glad that we have audio. We also got UART recently merged in. Um, so for people who want to like talk to a GPS unit or like a fingerprint sensor or other like uh, devices that use a TTL UART, um, check that out. Another one of my favorite things that just got merged in like last night is we also now have dual CDC, which is like, what? what is that? It means not only do you have uh, USB connection to the REPL, but you have a separate USB serial connection just for streaming data, raw data back and forth, which is like super awesome. Other question? Could you do PDM for easy filtering? Um, I don't know. Maybe like with the PIO and some like cool lookup tables. Um, but for now, we're just using plain old PWM, which, which is working fine because it's like, again, 120 megahertz or something like super fast. Um, and, as, you know, it's a decade above 22 kilohertz when you divide it down. I think we did 10-bit PWM, um, and it's still, you know, in the end, the final frequency is, you know, do the math, but it's like, you know, 200 kilohertz or something, which means you can filter it out. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so the dual CDC is interesting because um, one of the things that I couldn't do with um, CircuitPython until now 
is how to send data between a computer and a CircuitPython board. Um, it's, it's something that's very easy to do with Arduino because you have like c control over the USB serial connection. But the REPL is what takes over the serial connection on CircuitPython and you can't send like special characters because they actually get interpreted as like control characters or like arrow keys or like control C. Um, so the second REPL will mean that people can do like CNC projects and remote control projects and like computer to device projects. So um, for those who've been like, hey, I want to send data between a computer and a CircuitPython board, um, you'll be able to do that now with uh, Dual York. Okay, next up, I got finally um, my final uh, first 1,000 of these funky 2 by 20 headers with a weird 30 degree bend. You may remember this from the CyberDeck design. So this is the CyberDeck uh, with um, an OLED display on it. And um, you'll notice that this one has no notch. And this one has a notch and you're like, what's the big deal? Like you kind of see it, like if I put my finger over it, see there's like this little, there's this like notchy type thing. There's a little bump here. There you go, so against my hand you can see it. So what this does, I, I really like this notch. This was like the last thing I wanted to get added. If you have um, hold on, something like the Raspberry Pi 400, um, there's a little notch in the top here, which again, you can barely see, but here there's like a, a matching notch. And what this means is that people won't be able to plug this in offset because it's very easy to accidentally plug it in off by one um, because there's nothing like this, there's nothing keeping it from like being misconnected. And if you've ever like had one of these, you know, non-notched um, two by 20 headers, you know that it's like, you, you have to center it perfectly and it's very annoying. Uh, for the matrix portal, um, we actually used a, a two by 10 instead of a two by eight header on purpose so that it would not be able to be misaligned. But um, with these two by, tw you know, because I, I have to stick to the two by 20 and two by 22 doesn't really exist, um, not the way two by 20 does, uh, which is very popular size. Um, I just opted to get this little like notchy thing. So, so you can see there's a little bump at the top. So that's cool, which means I can send out my CyberDeck PCBs, so we'll get them in soon. Very exciting. All right, so a sample smorgasbord. Okay, and then finally, I got a whole mess of samples from Espressif. Very exciting. So let's check out what's in there. Okay, so first up, ooh, ESP32 S3 Beta 2 chips. Um, six of them. So what's going on with these? So these... Oh man, this is like the hardest to open bag. So um, this chip is the ESP32 S3. This is a new Espresso chip um, that has not only Wi-Fi and USB, but also it's a dual core and Bluetooth. So it's actually more like an ESP32 with native USB. It's kind of like the S2, I, I really like the ESP32 S2 because it has native USB. It's been awesome in CircuitPython. We're, we're slowly making headway. Um, but one of the um, things that's a little annoying about it, I mean, just a teeny bit, is it doesn't have the Bluetooth that the ESP32 has, and people love native Bluetooth. And it doesn't have dual core, which means that there's some audio projects that and other like advanced comp, you know, machine learning or computational projects that can't run because it really needs that secondary core, one core to do the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and one core to do um, computation. So the S3 solves that problem by having a dual core and um, Bluetooth. So this will be cool. So, you know, this is like super alpha, which means, you know, beta, beta two. So probably won't see modules for this for at least six more months. But um, having chips means I can desolder, you know, an S2 chip maybe from an existing module solder this in and then um you know we can start doing the circuit python development and testing it out in arduino I, I think it'd be cool because native usb dual core wi-fi bluetooth what's not to love nothing okay next up another sample i got is the esp32 c3 okay so the c3 is totally different than the s3 even though you're like how is that it sounds the same so the c3 is the risk five core chip. So this doesn't quite have native USB. I think we looked into it and it has like a, a 
it has USB built in, but it's a USB to JTAG and serial or something. I, I, I'd look into it in more detail, but um, it's a uh, RISC-V core with Wi-Fi. Um, so this is pretty co cool. Um, this is the stuff that Espresso is really focusing on right now. Um, so if you're interested in RISC-V and Wi-Fi, check it out. Here's a hint. There are some available on DigiKey. So if you go and search for ESP32 C3, I believe some of the modules are available. Um, these cute little modules, so check it out. I just got this today, so like I haven't even plugged it in. But um, very interesting. We probably won't be porting CircuitPython to this because, again, uh, I don't believe it has like true native USB with endpoints. I think it has like a predefined USB thingy thingy. Okay. So last but not least, getting through all these samples. Ooh. My DigiKey parts came in. I ordered these about a week ago. So this is the ESP32-S2-FR. Okay, what's the FR? It stands for flash. We're inside. It has flash inside. Um, you don't need uh, an external SPI flash or QSPI flash chip. The QSPI flash is uh, wire bonded inside the pads. And there's also another chip coming out later um, that's also going to have two megabytes of PS RAM. So this is cool because it's one chip. You you know it has some S RAM, so you can do some basic Circuit Python or like you know plenty of Arduino stuff in the 320k. Um, and you don't need that extra chip, which means that there's some projects that I can do that I've been meaning to do um, that need it. So I got about I think like 50 or so of these. So they look a lot like those S3 chips. I mean they're just like okay. Well, I'll pick that up later. Let's see if I can get real close. Let's get small. Let's see if this can. Yeah, I can kind of see it. So there you go, small chip, ESP32 S2FR. So built in four megabyte flash QSPI. So what is it that I wanted this chip for? Well, let's go to my computer, I'll show you, and then we'll roll into the great search. So, um, I wanted to build a cutie pie with Wi-Fi. A Wi-Fi cutie pie. How can you not love that, right? So um, let's just show off uh, the bottom. Oh, one question oh, before yeah. we get into this. Does ES3 have SRAM? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I really don't know. I haven't looked into it much. Um, so this is um, the ESP32 S2 FR. So you'll notice that there's no... Um, uh, QSPI flash chip. Now, could I fit it? I probably, you know, if it happened to be over here, I might have been able to wire it up. Although I think it would have had to be wired up over here. I mean, I could probably fit it. But boy, I really kind of like it if I don't have to. Like, that's just another thing I don't have to route. Especially when the version with SRAM comes in. Because I wouldn't be able to fit PSRAM and QSPI um, on this board for sure. It's just, it's just way too small. So they've got the crystal, a bunch of capacitors, and then I have this idea. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but like sometimes I don't have good ideas, and that's okay. Um, where, hold on. So this is what the top looks like. So the top has the USB-C. Two buttons, because you need one for boot zero and one for reset. Um, power supply, little NeoPixel, uh, stem and QT connector, of course, and then this is the antenna. So the antenna is on the top, and then I'll have like maybe a wide via that goes through the PCB, and then um, to the antenna trace on the other side where we have like the the matching capacitors and stuff. Although maybe I could have like one output capacitor up here um, that you know to to match the, the uh, antenna. Is it gonna work? I mean, I usually don't do this. I usually put. Um, antennas on the same side, you know, I put, I put them in one long straight trace, but, uh, you know, and I might still do it. I do have a little bit of space on the bottom for the antenna, but I thought it would better have the antenna radiating up off the top of the PCB than on the bottom, especially if it's against like a breadboard or like soldered into something, you know, it's like, it's better to have it radiating up into free space. So, you know, which way am I going to go? I'm not sure. But while I was doing this, I was, uh, researching, some antennas and I realized that would make a really good great search how to get antennas and also showing off some of the new 
uh, newly fangled antennas that I found while looking for antennas for this board. Where in the world is that part I need? The Great Search with DigiKey. All right, The Great Search with DigiKey and Lady Ada. They're the ones who do this. Thank you, DigiKey. Okay. Um, Lady Ada uses all her engineering skills to search the DigiKey site. So what is this week's Great Search, Lady Ada? Okay. I'm designing a board with the new ESP32 S2, uh, which is a Wi-Fi chip. And hold on, here you go, schematic checklist. And um, so this chip, it has native, uh, you know, Wi-Fi capabilities. All you have to do is plug in, uh, you know, a uh, inductor and two capacitors, and then an antenna. Um, to make for very easy Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, people love the ESP32 series, and usually I use a module, but for this design, I have to go real small. It has to fit in like, you know, the size of a coin. It's very tiny, this little board. Um, I think it's like, you know, one inch, like point, point not, point 0.8 inches by uh, point 0.7 inches, so very small. So I don't have space for a module. Instead, I'm gonna put the raw chip on with any passive components and an antenna. So I have to go and find a inexpensive surface mount antenna that's small enough to fit on this PCB. So I thought, let's go to DigiKey and start that search. So it's Wi-Fi, um, so we want a uh, you know Wi-Fi antenna, and basically antennas can be tuned to different frequencies. The frequencies that we want are 2.4-ish gigahertz. Um, Luckily, there's a lot of people making Wi-Fi connected electronics, and so we're not gonna have to search that hard to find it. If you're doing something with like 110 megahertz or you know something that's not a standard ISM band, you know you're you're gonna have to search a little bit harder, or it might actually be easier because there's less options. Um, but for us, let's just search for Wi-Fi antenna. Okay, so all sorts of antennas, you know, modules, accessories. Um, you know, all this stuff. Well, we just want the, the antennas themselves. Obviously, that search will pop up any Wi-Fi module that also has antennas. All right, let's go for active parts. Oh, look, there's us. Yay. Um, and let's look for normally stocking and uh, real host compliant, because that's what our minimums are. Um, we want something that comes in a, a tape and reel, so not a tray or bulk. And that will, you know, that will cut down just so we're looking at uh, components that aren't on a tray because there's some larger um, antennas that come bulk. We don't want, we don't want like a duck antenna. We want like a little surface mount antenna. Okay. Um, next up, uh, there's a lot going on here. So there's like so many frequency ranges and I kind of was like, oh my God, like what am I doing here? But the first thing you want to check is like, well, how many bands? Are you going to do like Wi-Fi and cellular? Are you doing, like, not different protocols, but different bands, like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and Zigbee and Thread, they're all gonna be 2.4 gigahertz. So you don't have to worry about that, but if you're doing, um, you know, there's some here that are like, oh, they do GPS or cellular plus Wi-Fi, then you'd want a multi-band antenna. In our case, one band is enough. Okay, cool, so we're actually pretty much, you know, we really dropped down to um, only 79 options or so which is good. Um, so, you know, here's where you can go for like the gain, right? You know, the highest gain possible. But the problem is, is that we're constrained by space and the larger the antenna in general, the better the gain you're going to get. You just have, you know, more space to work with. When it's small, you have to do like funky tricks to get it to resonate um, at the, the frequency that you want to um, transmit at. Okay, so let's also go for the center band frequency. So we want... We want the center band about 2.4 gigahertz. Then remember, there's also 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. We're not doing that. Okay. So far, so good. Okay, so let's look at some of the options we have here. So here are some cool things. So there's like pillar antennas. Um, so these are antennas that stick up, right? They pick in place and you put them down and they stick up out of the PCB. I can't, unfortunately, use these. Um, there's also a lot of like these little, like you can see there's like a multi-layer, like there's some sort of like multi-layer fractal antenna thing going on here, which is pretty cool. I'm probably gonna pick up a couple different antennas to try out. Um, 
you know, if I look at ones like these, I can kind of tell they're probably not going to fit. These are longer ones. Um, but, you know, anything that looks long, I don't think I'm going to be able to fit because I need kind of something short and squat. Um, but there's antennas like this. And um, one thing I did, you know, my favorite thing is I search by reverse stock number to see the most popular ones. Um, these are the, you know, I've seen these antenna, these bent metal antennas on um, U-Blox modules. Um, they're apparently quite good. Uh, and what's neat is, you know, they pick in place and they seat into like little holes on the PCB and, and they go above the PCB so you get nice uh, 3D radiation. Um, I saw a couple designs with these Fractus antennas. So, you know, the question is like, well, which antenna? Also, these like, these are super cool, like cyberpunk, like 3D Molex antennas. I've seen these, I think, um, I think like the, small, I don't remember, the, like the Teenytronics, somebody who makes like very small electronics and, and, and they use these antennas. Um, but the antenna that I'm actually going to use is, oh, it's interesting. It's not, oh, it didn't come up. Why didn't it come up? Hold on. It is the, because I actually used this part. This is the AT40. I wonder if I, I didn't come up. Um, so this is the antenna that I used on the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. So let me show that off. So um, if you see this little antenna here, um, this is the same antenna. It's a little tall, but what I like is it's it's very compact. Um, it's like about the same size as a 1206 resistor. So this is the antenna that I'm probably going to pick up just because I already have these. And again, they're like, they're really inexpensive. They're only about 25 cents a piece. Um, however, I also want to um, try out like these Fractus antennas and this Bolex antenna because this looks cool. Like this is very compact and it sticks up. And especially if the price isn't um, too bad. So let me put down 1000 And... Um, you can see like, you know, for 25 cents, there's a lot of like 20, oh, here it is. So for like, you know, 25 or 30 cents, there's a lot of little um, nubby antennas that I can try out. So the good news is that you don't have to have the exact right package on your um, layout. So I'm probably just gonna use like the Johansson, you know, kind of, uh, hold on, sort of standard um, little nub antenna. Um, footprint and then I'm going to probably solder in different ones and then I can use either, uh, use a spectrum analyzer I have a little teeny one or you know what I've also done is just a distance chat test like I just have I just see how far away I can get um, from the router before it stops working where I can measure um, the RSSI and just say like okay of these four boards I made which one has um, the lowest RSSI and that tells me which one the the, you know, the antenna is working out for so there's a lot of options um, Try them all. One thing that was, uh, you do have to watch out for, it's not a big deal, but there's only the height, the size isn't mentioned. So you're going to have to use the photos and dig into the data sheet um, to find the uh, dimensions of the antenna. And then, you know, any um, uh, uh, any layout recommendations. There's also like these gigantic patch antennas. I mean, if you want something with just like really great gain, like these are awesome, but they're they're gonna be expensive. Okay, so the one I ended up saying I'm gonna go for is this one, 2450AT18B100. There's another couple that are very similar, but they're thinner. This one is a little bit bigger, but I've used it really successfully with all sorts of Bluetooth projects. So I think it'll probably work out for this Wi-Fi project as well. But if people have suggestions for a Wi-Fi antenna that is really small, let me know because I. I've never had to make such a small Wi-Fi board before, uh, but we'll uh, come back on another desk of Lady Ada and see how this antenna fared. That's a great search. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ Key. Okay, okay, a couple questions that came in. Yeah. Um, I'll go back to the... Cutie Wi-Fi Pi. Yeah. Uh, can you fit a quick on uh, Stemma on the Cutie Pi? 
There is one. Okay. Never mind. See that now. It's right there. Um, you can kind of see it in the corner. Of my I see their response to their question. Why not a SRM connector? I, guess, I think just for the wireless thing you were just showing. Like a UFL? Um, I really want to have it be like fully compact and functional. I don't want to have to have it like a separate uh, antenna. Okay. Um, if you're not using PreSIM module, you need to get it FCC certified separately later. Yeah, I will. Okay. And I'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. But, you know, with, with Espresso, their stuff's really good, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. Uh, also, like Wi-Fi, like it's, it's well, it's, I'm not coming up with new exotic protocols. It's Wi-Fi. You know, the, the testing procedure is pretty well established. Uh, the 3D metal antennas, PIFA, you saw on the U-Box modules are from Sweden antenna company ProAnt. Yeah. And saw the PIFA antennas on the GPS prototype are brought out to a Pi fourth birthday party in Cambridge. Okay. Okay. Uh, next up, I think you're just, that was just, hey, look at that cool thing. Um, someone was asking about Eagle files. Look like they found, they are up there. Is there a free Eagle viewer? Eagle is free. You can view any file for free. Okay, so you can download the trial yeah. or whatever. Yeah, okay, yeah. so there you go. Or you can import it to KiCad, which people do all the time. Import the file to KiCad. Yeah, we may not have a fritzing for every single... We do not have a fritzing for every yeah. single thing. We have for many, but not for everything. Yeah. Okay, uh, then this is Adafruit. Maybe the antenna the next Spectre Maker uses on his S2 Feather. I don't know which one it is. I didn't think of the S2. I'll go to your computer because we have that. Yeah, this is that Fractus. So yeah, I might I might try that. I mean, like it looks like a pretty cool antenna, um, and and luckily it looks not too much bigger than. Um, that little Johansson one. So yeah, I might try that one out. Okay. It's cool. And then someone's looking for the Eagle files for the uh, art, the Pi RTC. I guess they're not up. Um, I don't know. Let me see. Adafruit Pi RTC RTC for Raspberry Pi PCB. Let's Looks see. like we have a bird in it. It looks like it's here. Yeah, from June 2018. Yeah. If it's not just post up in no, the forums. No, it's right here. It's under Pi RTC. Okay. I guess that's it then. Okay. Do, do, do. The DS3231 one. DS3231 one. Okay, it looks like. Oh, yeah, maybe that one isn't up. Okay. I'll get that added. I think we just forgot to, to put it up. Looks like every everything else is up. So I'll, I'll add it tomorrow. We have we have GitHub time. Okay. Or you can accuse us of um, being evil and being a closed source company that never posts a single file ever. Or we maybe just forgot and we'll post it up tomorrow. I mean, we have like 500 different boards. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you're the most certified open source hardware company, even if you, you uh, forget a file. Or sometimes people ask for files before we even have the product done. Uh, we probably just forgot. Sorry, we'll put it up tomorrow. Yeah, although, actually, did I really not have it? That's weird. Yeah, I guess I forgot. All right, we'll add it. Well, that's good because it means we can uh, OSHA certified too. Doesn't matter. Still not open source. No, enough. I know, but I'm saying Still like... not pure enough. Not pure enough. Shame. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Such we'll, a pity. Um, we'll post, yeah, we'll post up the file tomorrow. You can also post in our forums if we ever forget any. Yeah, people post in the forums and then we just, we just get to it. Okay. Let me see if there's any other questions. I think I got to everything. Pie boards eventually adopted another ProAnt design, the niche antenna used on the Zero W3B Plus and 4. So yeah, those, those are a different, you know, those are like a licensed special thing and you probably need a multi-layer PCB and I'm going to try to get away with a two or, you know, maybe four layer for this uh, cutie pie. I think I'd get away with two-layer. Everyone always tells me I can't do two-layer, but I always do two-layer, and I always get away with it. Mm. Okay. All right, and with that is okay. tonight's Desk of Data. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. 30 minutes on the dot. Ding. <laughs>